finally, and, and look back at chapter 1, verse 20. They had to resist Satanism. Another way the saints had been discipled by Paul was to resist the strong, satanic, occultic witchcraft that had grown up around pagan Ephesus. The only way a believer could last in Ephesus was to learn the biblical truths of how to stand against and resist all the ways that Satan and his demons were at work. In chapter 1, verse 20, it says, Believers who resist the devil know and believe Jesus is supreme. He's above all. It says in verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and listen and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, far above all principalities, all powers, all might, all dominions and every name that's named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Verse 22, he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Did you get that all? Jesus is greater than all. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We should not live in fear of the darkness, of the realm of darkness, of the prince of darkness. Those people had to learn. They had to know and believe that Jesus was supreme. Look at, look at verse 2, though, of chapter 2. Believers had to resist the devil by never forgetting he used to be their old master. See, we don't, we don't make fun. And we don't treat lightly the devil. It says in, in Ephesians 2, 2, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Satan used to be our master, and he knows us very well. You know, they said the terrorists in Mumbai, remember the ones a couple months ago that shot up uh, Bombay, how horrible it was. Do you know what they knew? They knew that hotel. They knew it better than the police, and they knew it better than the soldiers. They had learned the back corridors. They knew how to use the servant stairways. And so that's how a handful of men held off the whole Indian army for day after day and killed so many people because they knew the ropes. They knew the, the lay of the land. Our old master, the devil, knows us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our fears. He knows our secret appetites, and he through the flesh, the, the traitor that we live in, this body, the flesh that we live in, through the world that allures us all the time, and through Satan and his demons, he knows the ropes. He knows how to get us distracted. So they never could forget their old master. But look at verse 27 again, if you haven't marked it. Chapter 4, verse 27. Paul said, Neither give place to the devil. Believers who resist the devil have learned the practice of closing the entry doors to demonic influence. Do you know how this church began? As soon as they got saved, they said, hey, Satan used to have a hold of us in this literature, in this material, in this media, in this conduct that we used to have. And so they got rid of it. They burned it. They closed the door to the devil. And if you are tempted through, through media, if you're tempted through music that reminds you of stuff, if you're tempted through pictures that remind you, if you're tempted by going to places where you've done things in the past that fed your flesh, close the door to the devil. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Finally, verse 11, and this is it. Believers, look at chapter 5, verse 11. Believers who resist the devil never get relaxed around any of the tools Satan uses to poison their minds in the minds of this world. Look what it says in verse 11 and half of chapter 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and have no fellowship. That means don't be comfortable and, and, and communing with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Don't get relaxed around any of the old ways Satan used to enslave you. Don't fellowship with them. Now, there's a difference between Jesus being friend of publicans and sinners and sharing the gospel and going to a bar to just imbibe of the old ways. There's a great difference. One is going in as a missionary. Jesus went into the company of evil people as a light. It's not going into the darkness for fellowship, for partnership. And, and it can be the darkness of old haunts or it could be the darkness of old media. It, the things we used to do, we must have a complete break from them because our old master knows how to trip us up. The choices that Christ seeks are, number one, by God's grace, I will follow my calling in Christ. 
I was prepared for good works. By God's grace, I will learn the spiritual secret of putting off and putting on. Even today, there are things in our lives we should say, I want to put those off, O Christ. I don't want those to be a part of my life. I commit to learn the spiritual secret of repenting of my past and of verse 11 of chapter 5, resisting evil influence. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Let's stand together with this truth on our minds. And as we stand, I would like you to think about one thing. One thing that the Ephesians, whether it was resisting immorality or resisting the evil influence or the false worship or resisting the strong tug of Satan in in their old lives, think of how they took the Word of God and believed the Word of God and said no to sin. And then pick one area of your life and say, Lord, I want to learn to put off that old me. And I want to put on the new me in Christ. And I want to walk in the power of your spirit in the newness of Christ. And I want to know the secret of resisting the devil, my flesh, and the world by trusting your word. 